Hey, what up though everyone? Welcome back to another episode of One Mike where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about the new Disney Pixar movie, Soul. Um, if you're Facebook friends with me, you probably noticed I've been watching it a lot. Um, I have two little girls, four and one, and um, they like to watch a lot of Disney, Disney Plus stuff. So uh, we spend a lot of time there. My one-year-old is really, really obsessed with uh, with Soul. She wants to watch it every time she sees like the banner that's across the top of Disney Plus. She points to it, points to it, starts going crazy. She wants to watch it. Probably watched it five or six times. So, um, I guess I guess you could say <laughs> I guess you could say I, uh, I like it quite a bit. Um, if I didn't like it, I probably wouldn't let them watch it as much as they do. But um, I really like Soul. Um, I'd say it's probably in the top of like the. Uh, the B tier of Pixar movies. Uh, for those of you who don't um, who don't know me that well, I like to rank things, particularly things from which there's a large body of items to rank. So, like if we're talking the MCU, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I like to rank stuff like that. You know, I like to uh, rank Pixar movies, uh, anything like that that has uh, multiple things to choose from, big series, Star Wars movies, stuff like that. So, um, but my rankings with Pixar are kind of weird because. I like, well, for one, Pixar doesn't make bad movies. So it's not like you have like A movies from Pixar, B movies, and C, D, E, F movies. It's like it pretty much stops at B. Like, like I think like the worst thing you'll get is a B minus, uh, maybe a C plus if we're talking like, I don't know, like Cars 3, which I don't even fucking remember Cars 3, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but my A tier consists of the same movies, but it's dif it's difficult for me to rank them within that tier because I like them for different reasons. So like take Toy Story, for instance, like all four of those movies are great. So it's like, how, how do I rank one over the other? Like you have the, the first one, which is the classic. Then you have the second one, which introduced Jesse and, uh, and Bullseye. And then you have like the third one, which has like all kinds of really deep themes in it. So like you have like all different ways to kind of like say like this aspect of Toy Story makes me like this one more, but like they, they change from day to day. Like I might watch the second one and be like, man, this is the best one. And I watch the first one, like, oh, this is the best one. But one thing that's consistent in uh, elite level Pixar movies is remember memorable characters. So, you know, we're looking like uh, Toy Story, you got Buzz and Woody. Uh, you have Monsters Incorporated, you have uh, Cars, you have the, Dor uh, the Nemo slash Dory series. All these ones that where we get sequels to them, usually it's because they have memorable characters. And I don't really know if um, our main characters, Joe and 22 from Soul, are going to be end up being one of those uh, memorable pairs that, we're, that they'll find a way to give us another one of these movies, um, which is kind of why I sit on the fringe of it being like A tier versus B tier, because I feel like A tier are those ones where, you know, you have these characters that are, iconic that people fans people want to see over and over and over again so um you know like i said we got four toy story movies where we're not slowing down uh as far as pumping those out although we're probably done now um so about soul specifically um i think that they did a great job of um giving us realism in our blackness and what i mean by that is you know when we a lot of people probably look at stuff like like movies with black characters and when they probably hear black black folks go, "Oh man, it's great to have this black character or this black actor or whatever." And and it's probably it probably gets almost kind of like eye roll inducing at some point. Like, man, how much do these guys got to see their see their faces on t television? But you have to remember all of this is happening fairly recently. And when it does happen, a lot of the times we're in the same kind of roles, you know, we got uh, like thugs and gangsters, you know, like, uh, in our, in our hood movies, like Boys in the Hood, shit like that, or you have, uh, or we're athletes, or we're slaves, or, you know, something like that, and we don't get to see ourselves in, like, in unique lights, and, like, until fairly recently, when, like, now we're getting characters that are, uh, traditionally might be white, but then when we make a live action movie of it, we'll recast that character and make them black, or, or Asian, or any, any other kind of thing, right, and, what I think is unique about Soul is that, well, well, one, it's the first Pixar movie starring, you know, an all black cast, essentially, um, at least as far as what we see on the screen. 22 is played by Tina Fey. But, you know, as far as what we see on the screen, you know, all black folks. And what makes it cool is that I feel like it's the, one of the most genuine depictions of black culture that we have out there lately. So, you know, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is the barbershop scene. 
Uh, the barber is played by Donnell Rawlings from, uh, you guys will know him from Chappelle show, the I'm rich, bitch, that guy. Um, he plays the barber. Great scene in there because that's so true to black culture is is the barber shop, man. Like, that's where we go to talk, kick it. You know, you might go in there. You know, you you technically, a haircut might take you 20, 30 minutes, but you can go to the barber shop and be there for hours just shooting the shit. Um, you know, usually there's sports on TV. Um, there's, we're talking hip hop, we're talking sports, like we're talking like random one-off dumb shit. Like what kind of superpower are you going to get on the 21st? Like all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, I haven't been to the barber in a minute, although granted that's by choice. I don't know if you can tell my hairline is still firmly planted at the front of my head. So I'm not actually bald. I, I shaved my head, uh, just cause I like the look, but, um, I did used to go to the barber a lot and it's, it's, just like that. Any movie you see that takes place in a black barber shop is just like that. Um, so that was cool to see that. Um, you know, it had you know cool barber, it had hater guy that was a uh, that was there hating on Joe. Um, you know, very realistic uh, depiction, which was cool. Um, I thought that Joe and Twenty Two had a great rapport. Uh, that being Jamie Foxx and Tina Fey, I feel like they did a great job in both of those roles. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I love the fact that they had those uh those guides that were all named jerry but then the one accountant was named terry and i really like terry i don't know maybe it's his accent i i don't know for some reason i really like terry um what else oh I, and of course central to the uh uh what makes this movie great is the idea of of life purpose and for those of us who grew up on pixar you know we're all around 40 years old at this point and, you know, a lot of us are going through that. I'm going through that, like kind of like this crisis of identity. Like, what what am I meant to be? Uh, what am I meant to be? What am I meant to do here? What are, what are my contributions meant to be? Do I want to stay slaving away at this job or do I want to pursue uh, what I'm passionate about? And as you can see, what I'm doing here, this is me trying to pursue something that I'm passionate about. I love film. I love movies. Um, and it's just something that I like to do. And, you know, Joe is experiencing what we all go through at some point, I believe, you know, there's people who hit that, who hit that mark earlier in life. And, you know, maybe they realize like, like Joe did, you know, he, had, he, he knew he wanted to play piano, uh, as a teenager, but some of us get to 40 years old, like myself. And we're like, you know, I don't really know if this is what I want to, want to, want to continue to do. Like, do I want to find a new path? Do I want to, uh, you know, change my outlook on life? That's something that I've been dealing with big time. So like, it's really cool to see a Pixar movie find a way to uh, to show that dynamic, but keep it entertaining for both adults and kids, which is what Pixar is, like that's their bread and butter, is finding something that tells a story, but also has depth and meaning and a message that can resonate with both kids and adults. And it's funny for kids and adults, or it's serious for kids and adults, like they do a great job. So um, the only thing is that for me, I think that Joe and 22 aren't necessarily that pair that people are going to be clamoring like I need another soul movie like you know this is one of those things kind of like a one hitter man it's about it's about someone who dies <laughs> like like do, how how are we going to recreate this we have Joe die again and like like it's it's um I don't I don't think it warrants a sequel um and I don't necessarily think that Joe and 22 are characters that are going to be on par with your Woody's or your Buzz Lightyear's or your Nemo's or your uh Mike Wazowski's, or, you know, whatever your favorite Pixar character may be. So um, lots of great stuff in this film. I highly encourage everybody to watch it. I've watched it like six, seven, eight times. And every time I notice something else that I like about it. So um, it's one of those ones that's rewarding on future views. So um, I definitely recommend check it out. For my Facebook timeline, it looks like all of you have. Like it seemed like everybody was watching it on Christmas Day. So, um, But if you haven't, highly recommend. Check it out. I'll be back soon with more videos here at One Mic. Peace.